Hello Internet. Someone had sent me this cart for repair. I don't know who it is, I don't know what's wrong with it, so let's take it apart real quick and see if XFX is as good as it used to be. Nope, old plastic. I've never seen a GPU made cheaper than this in my entire life. Actually no, I have. It was another XFX, similar to this. Anyway, I checked for resistances everywhere and everything is looking good. So let's power it on and see if anything blows up. <coughs> Nothing blew up. I'm very sorry. Maybe next time. All power rails are good, but the power consumption is a little low, so I will check the phases with the oscilloscope and I see nothing. But wait, this doesn't automatically mean that the GPU is dead. Some cards have power saving mode, and not all phases are active until they are needed. In this case, none of the GFX phases are active, but we still get an image. The reason why we get an image is because this card has a dedicated display rail called SOC. Move. In any case, in the event of crash under load for AMD cards, I want to monitor face controller using this dongle. I will solder the wires to the board to these three pads that are directly connected to the controller. Then I'll open up the software and the first thing I want to do is to check loop configuration and save it just in case. Then I'm going to stress the card and see if it crashes while monitoring the controller using the device status utility. No errors, no crashes, okay. So without knowing who sent the card and what's wrong with it, how do you think I know it came with a crash under load? Let's roll back and take a close look at the heatsink. Notice anything? Me neither but there should be thermal paste left over. Instead, thermal paste is chilling on top of the core and it never made contact with the heatsink. Why is that? Simple. Someone replaced the pads on this card and the pads were too thick, preventing the core from contacting the heatsink. Needless to say, this GPU ran with no cooling at all and it must have crashed no more than a minute after booting, even without a load. In any case, I put a proper thickness pads and now you can see that the core is contacting the heatsink, squeezing almost all thermal paste out from in between. And that is exactly what you want to see. So let's assemble the card and see if we can run Fermark and what kind of temperatures we're gonna get. Nothing good to see here. Temperatures between the core and the hotspot are nearly 30 degrees. Maybe I did something wrong? To make sure I didn't, I opened the card to verify the contact and everything was beautiful. Then I tried to flip the switch and ran a stress test again. The temperatures dropped by barely 5 degrees, but still too hot to consider this for a mass production, given that nothing is wrong with the thermal interface. But oh well, this is AMD, in the nutshell. XFX simply multiplied their efforts to fill the landfill. And the switch has two modes, kill or no kill. Hopefully this sticker will help to understand the true purpose of this switch. And I hope this video goes to show that replacing thermal pads can kill your GPU and that using overclock switches can make it happen even quicker, so don't use it. Or your GPU is gonna end up on my bench. Another GPU I got earlier was this 3080 Founders Edition. My guess is someone had tried to service it but ripped the connector from the board, got scared thinking it was the fan and sent it to me for repair. Fan connectors are those two, but he thought, mm, I don't know what he thought. Whatever. Poor guy, didn't even test the card before sending it in. Anyway, once I explained the problem, he said he didn't care about the LEDs, so I just asked him to pay 5 bucks for the thermal paste. 
and call it a day. But he insisted to pay more. You know, whatever makes you happy, I guess. In any case, I hope you guys have learned something today. And if so, please hit me with a like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. Have a blessed day. Goodbye.